All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to the wonderful world of the IETF RFC, that fabulous playground of internet standards. Without further ado, we have our featured RFC. Today's featured RFC is RFC 793, the Transmission Control Protocol. There's our search, search tools. <laughs> this dates from that wonderful, wonderful time period where all of these initial RFCs come from, and that's long about the early 80s, so September 1981. And you may recognize this time zone or this uh, time slot from uh, the other RFCs we've talked about so far. So a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of the RFCs that we use today all come from that same time period. All right, there's a whole bunch of associated RFCs with this. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these. Obviously, we're just doing a quick video here. But uh, let me point out a couple of things for you. Uh, 1122, that's a pretty common RFC. A lot of RFCs refer to this because it's the rules for how these protocols are supposed to, uh, supposed to operate. But over the years, TCP has changed quite a bit. So we see that this is RFC 793, but all of these obviously post-date that. So uh, 3168 adds explicit congestion notification. And what that means is that uh, TCP has what we call a sliding window for flow control. And so that means that the idea was that I'm going to keep sending more and more data into the network until that data starts to die on me. And when it dies, I'll back off and I'll say, okay, I guess that's about all I can send. That's one way of handling congestion. It's one way of managing flow control. Another way is to have the routers keep an eye on it. And when the router queues get filled up, queuing theory, uh, then the routers can do what we call random drops. And so the routers can drop transmissions from random TCP senders, and in so doing, it automatically slows down those TCP senders. Another way to control congestion. Well, one more way is to implement this set of uh, fields, which says, hey, look, there's congestion in the network. You might want to slow down. And it's an approach to, uh, to congestion that doesn't involve dropping packets, at least not initially. Now, another one is, another fun one is 6093 with the urgent mechanism. And as we read here, TCP implements the urgent mechanism that allows sending users to stimulate the receiving user to accept some urgent data and then immediately acknowledge it. So the idea is that a sender can say, hey, listen, this is important. Read this and tell me that you read it. A lot of TCP transmissions don't use this, but it's out there. It's available and you have to be, for both of these, you have to be ECN or urgent capable. A couple of these are pretty obvious. Sequence number attacks. Um, I will point out 1180. 1180 is just a terrific RFC to read if you want to know how all of this stuff works together. It's a tutorial. This is how networks work. And it's not just about uh, TCP. I guess the last one that I'll, that I'll make note here is uh, TCP extensions for high performance. Uh, the window size is really a byte count. So what that means is that you're telling senders, hey, listen, this is how much data I can accept. And the sender tells you, or the other end says, this is how much data I can send or accept. And uh, so the window size is limited. But with high-speed networks and high-speed processing and everything else, we can send a lot more data than the early standard could allow. And so window scaling allows us to grow the amount of data that we can send at any one particular uh, or in any one particular session. So here we get to uh, TCP itself. Uh, TCP is intended for use as a highly reliable host-to-host -host protocol. All right, well, that's pretty straightforward. One of the quotes right out of the RSC, connection-oriented. So that's why sometimes you'll hear folks talk about connection-oriented and versus connection-less. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to UDP. But connection-oriented simply means that it's, it's reliable because we're keeping track of all the bytes that we sent. And we're managing all this congestion. So the idea is that when the network has problems, we're going to respond to it. And I'm going to keep track of all the data that you sent me. And I want you to keep track of all the data that I sent you. So that's what sequence numbers are about. Sequence numbers are the byte count of the things that I've sent you. And when you send me acknowledgments, you're acknowledging the same numbers, the same byte count. And that tells me that you got it. Your acknowledgment number comes back with, uh, my sequence number plus one, or in other words, the uh, next sequence number you expect. Now, the other fun thing about this RFC is that uh, this document focuses its attention primarily on military computer communication requirements. So we, we sometimes forget that. A lot of this stuff came out of the desire to have highly reliable systems 
for a particular application. And it says, oh, by the way, same problems are found in civilian and government uh, systems as well. So just a little bit on our background. Remember, these are DARPA projects, Defense Advanced Research Projects. And here, of course, is uh, an actual TCP packet that sort of highlights some of our fields. Right smack dab in the middle there, underneath the green arrow. If you're colorblind, I apologize. It's the arrow that's pointing down. That is the, uh, the way the thing looks like in the original RFC. TCP headers are typically 20 bytes, but we have those options down there that can make them larger than. I've uh, highlighted in boxes there the source and destination ports. That's our layer 4 addressing and then our sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Now these happen to be relative, so we're looking at the start of a conversation until the relative values are zero. Uh, and that's because they're a heck of a lot easier to read than the actual sequence numbers. So Wireshark is being very nice to us here. I put the numbers in red there, 59D50639. That's an actual sequence number. So relative number here is zero, but the actual number is, number is to the right. And you can see that it's probably a lot easier to start with a relative number. Uh, just for fun, I also put an arrow that points to all the flags that are possible. Uh, and I'll remind us that we've got a start a handshake and a finishing handshake. The start handshake or the connection handshake is a sin, sin, ack, ack conversation. Three packets that have those flags set. And then, of course, we have the fin, ack, fin, ack, four-way handshake when we shut down. Well, I think that'll about do it for this particular adventure into IETF RFCs. This message was brought to you by the RFC 793 TCP. Next up, we'll do the user datagram protocol. You guessed it, it comes from that same time period. Well, again, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and may your packets always reach their destinations.